Hello, BookTube. I have a guest, my friend Sam, also a book critic just like yours truly. Uh, and I, I have other things that I want to do, but there's mail here and it's been eating away at me. So I want to, I want, I wanted to open it on camera. I figured you were game. Uh, no. Mail, yes. Uh, mail. And the first one. <laughs> Look at how small that it's is. It's not a book. <laughs> it's probably a catalog. That's a bill. It's a. Uh, your your bill your debt has come due, <laughs> Donahue. Can't just do this for five years and not expect to pay one day. Let's see. It's got to be a catalog of some yeah. kind. Oh, okay. Flatiron Books. The Flatiron Books. Uh, Winter 2020 catalog. Just Did they ever a, do anything? Just announced a new editor. Megan Lynch, who was the editor of uh, Echo, which has moved to Flatiron. There you go. Inside American page. Dirt, Janine Cummins. Yes, about a bookseller in Acapulco who gets chased out of Mexico by the Mexican drug cartel and becomes a migrant in the United States. Oh. <laughs> How did you know that? Blurred by Don <laughs> Winslow. The a son of a gun, it is. Well, this is what happens <laughs> when you stray onto his patch. I don't know anything about these things. Alicia Keys, is she some sort of actor? She's a musician. She's a musician. Does she sing the rock and or roll? <laughs> it's the R and or B. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do without me on this particular <laughs> panel? I would be lost. Uh, Cured by Jeffrey Rediger, The Life-Changing Science of Spontaneous Healing. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, history of the NRA. Uh -huh. Sarah Kenzie. Oh, look at that. Sarah Kenzie's book. Uh, some of you might follow her on Twitter. She's a very good, as you put it, a very good follow on Twitter. And this is Hiding in Plain Sight, the Invention of Donald Trump and the Erosion of America. She's all, on Twitter, she's all about uh, an international crime cartel. That's what she describes Trump's businesses and the current White House as. Uh, the Yellow Bird Sings. That's a novel. Uh, historical novel. Um, it's a curious mix of sort of the bogus diet and healing books and and uh, novels, just literary novels. Novel about Jane Austen. Yeah. Called Miss Austen by Gil Hornby. Sam Watson's next book. Did you read his book on improv? No. He's, uh, what was it called? The author of six books, including the best-selling Fosse, Fifth Avenue, Five A.M., Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and The Dawn of Modern Women. But, but his last book was not any of those. It was a history of improv. It doesn't seem to be listed here. All right. Well, uh, book on Rust. <laughs> Steve Cavanaugh's new book, Twisted. He's the one who did Thirteen. The killer isn't on trial. He's on the jury. <laughs> All right. So this is this is the. Uh, this is the Flatiron Books catalog. Anna K. Oh, there's a YA update of the Anna Karenina story. Anna K. Aw. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> all right, good. All right, so a catalog. Fine. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's let's forge on. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is 2020. Uh, this is. A respected man about town, a well-known burgermeister in his town, who, when the Nazis came to power, it's a perfect example of what the Nazis did. They didn't just make good people do bad things. They allowed bad people to do bad things. Suddenly, in your town, you suddenly realized who the worst people were. And this, this ordinary burgermeister became the butcher of Latvia. <laughs> uh, and this is, wow, this is a book about his apprehension. Fantastic. By Stephen, Stephen Toffee. That name rings a bell. Uh, he wrote The Black, oh, The Black Hand is the one I read. Agent Garbo and A Captain's Duty. But I only read uh, The Black Hand by him. Uh, but anyway, I, I know the story about here. The, great to see if there's a book on here. This is this is great reading. Uh, this is the untold story of an Israeli spy's epic journey to bring the notorious butcher of Latvia to justice. It's the case that altered the fates of all ex-Nazis, pushing the German legislature into a dramatic debate and massive vote to redefine Nazi war crimes as never expiring. Because at the time, this was in the 60s, wasn't this? In the early 50s, something like that? In 1965, the statute of limitations on most war, Nazi war crimes was going to run out. Yeah. So Mossad, Israel sent Mossad to help track this guy down. They right. didn't want him to suddenly say, well, statute of limitations, maybe. 
So, you know, the butcher of Latvia has the, the, the condo next door and there's nothing we can do about it. So they, they sped up the clock to find him. And the details are incredible. One of the agents got to know him disguised his face, his voice, his past, and actually got to know him in terms of we're going to have coffee and we're going to play chess every morning. Got to know him personally, day by day, until he could arrest him and have him sent to trial. Uh, fantastic. All right, well, this is 2020. This is April. Uh, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but I'm glad to have it. I'm glad to know that it's out there. Uh, that was that was for me. That was really, really cool. I'm sure there'll be a novel in here somewhere. There has to be. Uh, we got here. Oh, this is lovely. Wow. Look at that. Okay, I did not know this was coming. This is a November book. A uh, naked hardcover that's just beautiful. This is Chinese Fairy Tales and Legends, ed edited by Richard Wilhelm and Frederick Martins. Really? Look at that. How lovely. Uh, more books ought to be like this. What good would a dust jacket do this? How could a dust jacket outdo? This is a Bloomsbury China, which I've never even heard of. Oh, God. Who knew there was a Bloomsbury China? Well, shucks. Okay. Uh, well, Richard Wilhelm, uh, those of you who might be wondering whether or not he's feeling a little sick, he's actually dead, and he's been dead since 1930. <laughs> this is actually a classic work. He wrote it a long, long time ago, and this is a new translation. Uh, by Frederick Martins. Or is it a new one? It translated his original classic into uh, into English, but what, what is the what is the copyright date on the translation? Is this a new translation? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. There you go. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, Chinese fairy tales and legends. November. <laughs> That's not really either of us. <laughs> uh, although Chinese fairy tales... Market propensity for cats instead of dogs. <laughs> dogs hardly in there at all. Oh, God. Okay, well, here's a novel, but this is paperback original? No. What is this? This came out last year. Oh, it did? This all right. So this earlier this year. Oh, okay. So this is a reprint of, uh, we might have seen it on this channel. This is The Heavens by Sandra Newman. It's not ringing quite a bell with me. Is that is that a... Uh... Even though it's not advertised as such, it's essentially a rewriting of Ursula K. Le Guin's The Lathe of Heaven. The, no kidding. It's basically the exact same. Is that a Vermeer in the background? No, it is. It is um, the what did you call it? the 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 woman from Shakespeare's sonnets, the black lady. Oh, the dark lady. The dark lady. It is about someone who is capable of effective dreaming. Her dreams. She has different lives. And, oh wow. And her dreams change reality. And it goes back in time, and one of the subplots involves Shakespeare and the Dark Lady. Ah, the yes. Dark Lady is a capable of effective dreaming. She's the same person as the person in the current As Kate's period. dreams grow increasingly real, and every morning she awakens to a new world that has suddenly changed. Oh, wow. So that is a take on uh, on the Lady of Heaven. Yes. It's more huh. romantic and less philosophically rigorous than the The Lady of Heaven is my favorite for Silver Wind. Okay, so this comes out in paperback uh, in late November. Uh, I can't remember if we saw it on this channel. Isn't that terrible? Uh, what? Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. This next one has fiction, but it's not Sam's kind of fiction. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> I was just about to say settle down, but I'm the only one who's excited. <laughs> I'm going to get a book. Yeah. Yes. Sam's going to check out with Barbara Pim for a minute here. Sean, the book maniac, is a, he's a, a booktuber. We can't seem to discourage him from making videos, and he's a big fan of Barbara Pim. Oh. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big fan of hers. Uh, Okay, well, these aren't novels that Sam's going to review for, for the Wall Street Journal. The first one is by Donna Grant. This is a Dark King's novel called Fever. <laughs> Disappointing cover for you, I would uh, <laughs> I'll learn to live with it <laughs> somehow. Uh, his kiss was fire and passion. She shivered, wondering how he knew just how to touch her, to send her spiraling into an abyss of pleasure. Was Penelope Lively ever write anything like that? <laughs> Ask you. Jeez Louise. And then the next one, uh, we're putting clothes on for the next one, not him and I. <laughs> That's 
totally gross. The the, uh, the model is putting clothes on. This is by Soraya Lane, and it's called Once Upon a Cowboy Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year at the Ford Family Ranch. Will one cowboy's homecoming be the greatest gift of all? <laughs> that sounds like a very chaste and modest and demure one. Yeah, we have a... We have Fever. Opposite sides. Yeah. <laughs> All right, something for everybody in this uh, in this mail hall. Uh, we do. I, I meant to say we do end with a box, uh, but the box is suspiciously light, so it could be just a, a big paperback of some kind. Oh right. Okay. All right. This is from the brainy folks at Harvard University Press. We got the advanced copy of this. I haven't touched it. Good lord. This is mid November. This is Orlando Patterson's The Confounding Island, Jamaica, and the Post-Colonial Predicament. Uh, we read all about this just a few weeks ago. This is a, 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 by a, a preeminent sociologist and National Book Award winning author. And it's all about uh, the mystery of Jamaica, the weird place called Jamaica. A place that I've never been. But it has its own very specific culture and history yeah, very and distinct. music and literature and I, everything. I've been there three times, and I didn't like it any one of those times. I was, it was hot, and there were bugs everywhere. <laughs> so even even long before most of you were born, I was going to exotic places and making crabby old man complaints. <laughs> uh, and then the box. In the box, and then we'll be done. Uh, what have we got here? Great boon to opening boxes without uh, an exacto knife if you don't have a sense of touch. Yeah. <laughs> you just rip these things apart. And it doesn't matter at all. Oh my. Miss Austin again. Oh my. Yes, it's Miss Austin again. Do we have uh, any kind of paperwork? No, there's no paperwork at all. All right, well, I don't know anything about this thing. Then I don't know when it comes out or not, but I know there are going to be quite a few of you who are going to suddenly. Uh, Tense up in your garnets. <laughs> this this is by Rory Muir, and it is Gentlemen of Uncertain Fortune. How younger sons made their way in Jane Austen's England. Fairly hefty thing uh, from Yale. But the Jane Austen's England is just there. It's just referring to a period of time. Yeah. It has nothing to do with Jane Austen. It has nothing to do with... Although she she had such a person, I wonder if they'll, they'll talk about the men in her family. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, she had a brother who was a young... A, yeah, she had she had a, a brother who. Well, he's got to be in here. He's just got to be. So the um, idea is. What was his name? Edward. The idea is the firstborn son inherits the, the firstborn the, son inherits everything, and then the. So what do the others do? What do the others do? One of them will go to, into the clergy. One of them will go into the army. Right. Uh, right. Then there's Wilson Shugart who started a booktube channel. He was, he was, <laughs> I, he, started book he did. Today's, yes, I did. Day and age. I did. Well, no, this, this channels. would have been Wilson's day and age as well. I, I can't remember which of Jane Austen's brothers he was. I don't know if he was the youngest or if he was, or if he was, yeah. Okay. There's, there's Edward. Oh, okay. There's, there's Edward. A bit of a fop, was he? A bit of a fop. Yes. Much like Wilson. <laughs> oh, that, that's not a bad portrait. Uh, except no dog. But you got the classical ruins. All right, well, that's interesting. I, I'm assuming this is a November release. Yale's pretty good about that. Uh, all right, so an unexpected end on history. So we have Gentlemen of Uncertain Fortune, about what Wilson Shugart does all day long. <laughs> then, then The Confounding Island, about Jamaica. I uh, don't want to cause anything to oh, God. <laughs> happen to anyone. This is a pretty interesting little mail hall. We have The, the Heavens, by Sandra Newman, and also... Chinese fairy tales and legends by Richard Wilhelm, who wrote it a long time, wrote before World War II. Uh, and then The Good Assassin. I'm kind of wondering if this thing's ever had an English translation before. Ah, oh, because he wrote it in German, you're saying. Kind of nice that, that uh, Bloomsbury made it such a nice production. That's And then, uh, we don't want to mess, we don't want to forget these. There's uh, uh, Once Upon a Cowboy Christmas uh, and Fever. <laughs> so, so we've got romance, contemporary fiction, history, sociolo sociology, and and uh, mythology. Not, not bad. So, there you go. A little your world was covered, a little my world was covered, and a little bit in between. <laughs> so, I'm assuming we're going to make other videos. <laughs> but uh, back to Barbara Kim. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Thank you, Mark Two. <laughs>